How's it going everyone? Before we get to the video, I'd really appreciate it if you took the time to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a video. The channel is getting closer to 1000 every day and I'd appreciate it if you helped it get there. Thank you. But anyways, today we're going to go over more Laker news and rumors. We'll go over Caldwell Pope pretty much confirming the new starting lineup with A.B. Bradley obviously no longer being in there. We'll go over how I believe J.R. and Dion will fit into the lineup. And we'll go over the likelihood of LeBron winning the MVP now that they are already voting on their awards already. But beginning with Caldwell Pope confirming what we pretty much already knew with that being that the new lineup will include him instead of Avery Bradley at point guard, although LeBron is the real point guard. He told reporters that he doesn't think there will be a big adjustment to the starting lineup because he was part of the starting lineup earlier in the year when Avery Bradley got hurt. So now with him confirming the starting lineup and if we're talking about the actual lineup they'll be playing, the lineup will be LeBron at point guard, Cobble Pope at shooting guard, Danny Green at small forward, AD at power forward, and JaVale McGee at center. Then I believe the first five coming off the bench will be Caruso at point guard, Deion Waiters at shooting guard, Kuzma at small forward, Markeith Morris at power forward, and Dwight at center. They could put JR in at small forward too, but I think they'll try to keep Dion and JR on the floor at different times and not take opportunities away from each other. Along with that, I think they'll want to give the guys who've been with the team longer and Dion and Markeith Morris the first opportunity before JR. But who knows, maybe Frank Vogel really wants to add more shooting with JR and put him in at forward with Dion at shooting guard and Kuzma at power forward. Either way, I think it is a good problem to have by not being able to figure out for sure what their bench lineup will look like. It means they have a good amount of depth even with Avery Bradley and Rondo being out. Their bench lineup also has a lot of versatility by being able to go with a small ball lineup looking like Caruso, Dion, JR, Kuzma, and then Markeith Morris at center if they want to. Now that we've gone over what the lineup may look like in terms of position, we'll go over how both Dion and JR will actually fit on the team. The reason why I think Dion and JR will be on the floor mostly at different times than one another, especially right away, is because they're both high volume players, meaning they both need the ball in their hands to get hot. If either one of them is taking opportunities away from the other, then it might be hard for the other to get any kind of rhythm going. And although they can both get hot rather easily, they're both knowing for going on very cold shooting streaks as well. This is why I think Frank Vogel will try to put them on the floor at different times at least right away while they get used to the offense and find where they can be most useful on the team. I think Dion will benefit most while playing when LeBron is on the bench as Dion is a guy who although he isn't a point guard, he likes to create his own shot. And this is a good thing because they really lacked a player like Dion before the NBA got shut down and it was a big reason why the team looked bad at times when LeBron isn't in the game to handle the ball and create shots for other players. JR, meanwhile, is the guy I could see get brought in when LeBron first comes back in after his break on the bench. I could see him filling in a little bit of time for either Danny Green or Caldwell Pope. While JR is also a high volume player, he doesn't need the ball in his hands as much as Dion does. This is why he was a good fit with LeBron most of the time and he can get a shot off quickly when LeBron kicks it out to him on the corner. This is how I think both Dion and JR can benefit the team while not taking away opportunities from each other. Again, I think it might be possible for them to play with each other eventually, but I think they should get comfortable with the offense and how the team plays first. Anyway, let's go on to the NBA deciding to make all the awards only based off of the season from October to March and how this affects LeBron's chances of winning an MVP award. LeBron was making a push at the MVP before the NBA got shut down. I think this really hurts the likelihood of him winning it over Giannis Antetokounmpo now. The final 8 games of the year could have really helped his odds of winning because all the games they played would have been against playoff teams or teams in the playoff hunt. If LeBron would have led the team to an 8-0 record in these games for example, I definitely think this would have put him in the lead for MVP. Along with hurting his odds of winning, I think it is probably more likely now that LeBron will limit his minutes in these final games since he has very little to play for. It would take the Lakers to lose nearly every game to lose their number one seed, and because of the low chance of that happening, LeBron probably won't play much in the final games leading up to the playoffs. Although he isn't all that far off from Giannis in the MVP race, he really only got into the conversation right before the NBA got shut down, and because of that I think a lot more people will vote for Giannis, who truly did have an incredible year, and he attained those numbers while barely playing over 30 minutes a game. But anyway, I think that'll do it for this video. How do you guys feel about the NBA deciding to vote for the awards already without including the final 8 games? And how do you feel about the Lakers lineup going forward? Do you think JR and Dion will be a good fit even playing at the same time as each other? 
Let me know by commenting down below and we can talk about it there as I always enjoy talking with you guys. And if you enjoy the video, remember to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.